welcome. So some warmth is coming and I haven't used this space for a while so I'm happy to uh, share a little bit of a home practice with you. We're going to start in a seated posture uh, that's comfortable for you. So if you like the crisscross of Sukhasana, you can stay like this. Otherwise, feel free to extend your legs out in front of you or come into another posture that just allows you to feel comfortable in the body. Start by taking a simple shrug of the shoulders up towards the ears as you inhale. And as you exhale, let the shoulders soften down the upper back. Place the palms gently on the lap. See if it's facing up or down, whatever's comfortable for you. Let the gaze soften down the bridge of the nose or just let the eyes close. And take that time to settle into the body, allowing yourself to feel the body sitting. Allowing the pelvis, the hips to soften down towards the floor, the earth below you. Feeling the support of the floor, feeling the crown, the top of the head. You feel a nice lift of quality right at the top of the head. Allowing the arms to soften down the sides or the waist. And not needing to work too hard. Just an easy kind of moving into this practice. Relax around your cheekbones and soften through the jawline. And just allow yourself to land, arriving here. So we carve out these spaces for ourselves. I call them little respites, stopovers during the day where you can be more present. Set aside what needs to be done, what you anticipate and look forward to, and what you don't. And rather just rest here with this breath that arises and this breath that falls and releases out. Bring your hands to heart center in prayer, thumbs resting right at the heart space with the intention of just cultivating spaciousness. Taking a breath in and letting that go softly. Resting the prayer down towards your lap, allowing the eyes to start to open up with a fresh perspective. Maybe you look around you, just notice, and then sweep the arms up overhead. So as you reach up and out through the sides of the waist, feel that lift of quality. And as you exhale, navel in towards spine, hands come to heart center. Carry the bare buck up towards the sky, clasp the palms, flip the palms up, and lengthen through the sides of the waist. And keep the back of the neck nice and long and relaxed. Keep the crown lifted upward, draw the navel in. Let the palm come down towards the floor and the left arm reach up and over. Soften the right hip down towards the floor and keep reaching with the right fingerprints. And then root the palm down, rise back up, reach up. And palm comes down, arm sweeps up and over. Side bend stretch. Allow that left hip to anchor down as you reach with the left fingerprints. Take one more breath in here, inhaling. Soft, easy exhale. Root the palm, rise on up, sweep it up. And exhale, create little fists with the palms, roll them out as they come down towards the floor. And then a big sweep of the arms up and out, reach up, rise up. And start to twist open towards your left, nice and easy. The front palm comes on your knee and the hand comes behind you. And feel yourself sitting up nice and tall, even though that you're twisting, there's still length through the spine. There's a lot of broadness and openness across the chest and collarbones. The shoulders are relaxing down the upper back and the breath is flowing really easy. And then come sweep it back up to center like you're gathering up the air. And then we'll start to twist open towards the right front palm on the knee and behind you. Feel that broadness across the chest, sitting up nice and tall. And keep the drishti soft, the gaze relaxed, the breath moves nice and easy. Slowly come back to center. Sweep the arms up nice and high. Maybe look up and bring your hands to heart center in prayer. Thumbs touch right at the heart space for a moment and then they rest down onto your lap. You'll take your legs out in front of you. You'll point and flex the toes a couple of times, sitting up nice and tall, pointing the toes and then flexing the toes. One more time, pointing, drawing the navel in, keeping the chest broad and relaxed and flexing. And then bringing the feet back in onto the mat. You'll move into all fours tabletop posture. If you have blocks, you'll have them at the front of your mat. Take anything you need to underneath the knees. Once you're here, the palms are underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. You'll tuck the toes and start to create a back bend in a cow shape. The tailbone lifts, the belly drops, and the chest draws forward. 
and then untuck the toes, round out through the spine. So feel a backward tilt of the pelvis, tailbone draws down and the entire spine rounds, hollowing out through the belly, pressing the sticky mat away from you. Start to move at a cadence that feels good in your body. Linking breath with movement. <laughs> Find a firm foundation in the palms. If the knees aren't comfortable, find a padding, right? A blanket underneath you. Nice and easy. Take one more round wherever you are. Enjoy the process of just creating spaciousness in the physical body. And then you'll come back into a neutral. Bring the toes to touch. Let the knees be a little bit wide as you sit the hips back towards the heels for wide knee child's pose. Let the forehead soften down towards the floor. Let the arms relax, maybe softening to the, um, the brow line, allowing the forehead to gently rock from side to side. Feel the back body resting. Take one more breath in here. And softly exhale it out. And gently rise back up to all fours. We'll walk our hands a little bit more in front of us and we'll start to move into down dog. Tuck the toes, firm up the palm. You might hover the knees for a moment, really engaging the upper body and then start to draw the hips up and back and feel the length through the spine, side body, legs lengthening, arms lengthening. Starting to walk in place, pedaling out through the feet, bending one knee at a time. Continue to press firmly into the palms, pressing the sticky mat away from you so the chest is drawing more towards the thighs, allowing the neck to relax, maybe drawing your head softly from side to side. And then come back to center, keep the legs a little bit still. Maybe soften the knees a little bit to keep the elevation of the hips nice and high. Take one more breath in here, inhale. Audible, soundable exhale. Very quietly, you're gonna start to release your shins down onto the floor. Keep the toes tucked, so use your upper body strength to do this slowly. And then start to cow the spine. Lifting up through the chest, tailbone lifted, round out. Hollow out the belly, untuck the toes, padding the spine. So this is spinal flexion, whole rounding of the spine. Come back to neutral, sit the hips back towards the heels. You're back in child's pose. Walk your hands over towards the right side of your mat, coming into a nice side stretch. Head relaxes back down, the left hip heavies towards the heel. And then slowly come back to center. And then you'll just transition slowly over towards the left side of the mat. Draw the right hip back towards the right heel, open up through the whole right side body. And then we come back to center. That's a sweet pause here. And then rising up to all fours. We rebuild our downward facing dog, firm up the palms, tuck the toes. Do it slowly so you're lifting the knees at first. Find that broadness across the chest and then pike the hips up and back. Chest towards the thighs and the legs start to lengthen out. Maybe pedal the feet again or sway the hips from side to side. See what your body needs right at this moment with this breath. Keep the navel pulled in, neck long and relaxed. Take a breath in, audible exhale out. Very quietly, again, we'll repeat this sequence. We're gonna release the shins down very quietly. So use that upper body strength. As the toes stay tucked, you start to move into your cow shape. The tailbone lifts, the chest draws forward. Untuck the toes, round out through the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, from the tailbone all the way through the crown. We're rounding out through the spine, hollowing out the belly. Come back to a neutral, sit the hips back towards the heels for a wide knee child's pose, nice and sweet. And walk your hands over towards the left side of your mat, coming into another side stretch, opening up through the right outer hip and rib cage. And then slowly come back to center and over towards the right side of the mat. Soften the hip towards the heels, open up through the left side. Nice and easy, we'll come back together to center, pause. Come back up to all fours and rebuild your downward facing dog. Firm up the palms, tuck the toes, hover the knees, and then shift the hips up and back behind you in this upside down V shape we hold. We're gonna stay here for about three breaths. Notice the cadence, the steadiness, and the fullness of your inhale and your exhale. Feel your legs working just as much as your arms. Feel the heels descend down energetically towards the floor. And then starting to come up onto the tips of the toes, soften the knees, begin to look forward and take your time, right? There's no rush in this practice. The practice asks, asks you to slow down. So once you're at the front of your mat, you're in Uttanasana forward bend. You can always use your blocks. Keep the feet parallel with one another. You can have them about hips width apart. Soften at the backs of your knees and allow the torso to drape and soften down. 
Feel the shoulders roll out a little bit, let the arms get heavy and let the head hang. So really feel this hanging sensation, this draping sensation of the upper body, the torso, legs nice and engaged, feet deeply rooted into the floor. You'll feel your heels rooted, the big toe mounds, outer edge of the pinky toe mounds, all rooted and planted into the floor. We'll start to slowly come up to stand. So this is vertebrae by vertebrae, I'm furling the spine. Arms are heavy, head is elastic to rise up. As you come up to stand, crown lifts upward and the arms sweep out and up for Urdhva Hastasana. So really reach and rise up. Yeah, out of the hands, the heart center, pause in your Tadasana. Let the thumbs sit right at the heart space for a moment. Close the eyes for standing meditation, breathing in and breathing softly out. As the eyes open, we'll carry our prayer all the way up towards the sky. Clasp the palms, flip the palms up and maybe straighten out through the arms. Firm up the thighs, keep the feet planted into the floor. And as you exhale, arms out wide in a T. Soften the knees, come all the way down towards the mat. Uttanasana, forward bend. Halfway as you inhale, getting nice and long through the torso. Press the thighs back, keep your gaze soft down towards the floor. And exhale, soften and release back down. Rise up to stand, sweep the arms out and up, Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. As you exhale all the way down, arms out wide, soften the knees, come down towards the mat, relax through the back of the neck. Halfway as you inhale, hands to shins or thighs, feel the belly pull in, broad across the chest and collarbones. This is a wonderful back strength move. Exhale, release back down. One more time, sweep it up, reach the arms up nice and high. Urdhva Hastasana, exhale all the way down, navel in, broad chest, slow, controlled, graceful movement. Halfway as you inhale, taking your time, feeling your aliveness as you move. Exhale, release back down. You'll plant your palms and bend the knees. You'll lunge your right leg long back behind you. Once you're in your lunge, just establish that nice alignment where you have your knee and your ankle aligned with one another. Your hands are underneath your shoulders. Blocks might be nice to have, right? If they give you a little bit, they elevate you a little bit more. Firm up the thighs, lengthen through the torso and breathe. The next time you exhale, start to straighten out through the front leg for modified Parjvottanasana pyramid pose. As you start to lengthen through that front leg, the head bows, so you're softening the spine, much like a cat shape. As you re-bend, take your time, let's set up for a warrior one. Bring your left foot out towards the side of your mat a little bit, carry your back right foot until it's planted down. Your back toes are facing more to two o'clock on a clock wall. Rise up to stand, bring your hands to your waist, straighten the front leg. Firm up your thighs, reach, reach the shin forward. So as the shin draws forward, arms rise up nice and high. Lift and rise. And we'll do a little bit of a warrior one flow. So we'll straighten the front leg, arms come down by your sides. And move, imagine you're moving through water. Fingers spreading out. Flip the palms up, bend that front knee, shin draws forward, firm up the back heel. Draw your right thigh just a little bit forward. And then starting to straighten through the front leg, hands come by your sides. So arms are out in this beautiful T position, like a warrior two. Rebend through the front knee, shin draws forward, hips descend down, back leg nice and active, arms rise up. And as you exhale, hands come down to frame the front foot. We run, re-lunge your back leg, so you're taking your time here. Keep your right palm underneath your right shoulder. Bring your left hand to hip, look forward beyond your mat, inhale. And as you exhale, start to turn open towards a twist. The left arm can float up towards the ceiling, towards the sky if that feels good. Continue to firm up your right palm on the floor, Feel a lot, very relaxed around the neck. You don't have to look up towards the sky. And as you exhale, look down towards the floor, palm comes down. So you're back in a lunge position. You can take it back to downward facing dog from here, or you can release the right shin down with the left to meet the right and then transition back to down dog. See what's preferable for you. If you're coming into a vinyasa with me, coming forward on an inhale into plank position, hands are underneath. Your, sh your hands and your shoulders are aligned with one another, right? And then your shins come down towards the floor, untuck the toes, draw the navel in. We're coming down to modified Chaturanga Dandasana. So it's a spend at the elbows, but nothing else is changing, keeping the spine nice and long. Once the forehead touches, lift up into cobra, firm up the thighs, tops of the toes rooted, shoulders away from the ears, breathe, tuck the toes, shift the hips all the way back towards the heels, and then pike it up and back for downward facing dog. A breath or two here, just settling in. And then a nice walk to the front of the mat. Soften the knees, come onto the tips of the toes, and start to walk forward, Uttanasana. Rising up to stand, sweep the arms up nice and high. Reach it up, feel the lift through the ribs. 
And as you exhale all the way back down towards the floor, Uttanasana forward fold. Halfway as you inhale for Ardha Uttanasana. Take your time, walk your hands up, lengthen through the torso. Exhale, release back down. You'll plant your palms, bend the knees, left leg is lunging back behind you. You have your right foot forward this time. Look to see, right, with curiosity, right, and mindfulness, that knee and ankle are aligned, hands are underneath our shoulders. We're lengthening through the back leg, keeping the torso nice and long. The next time you exhale, start to straighten out through the front leg for modified pyramid pose. Soften through the back of the neck, relax the shoulders, and feel that opening through that back right hamstring. <laughs> Notice if you need to have a little bend in that front knee, you're welcome to. Rebend through the front knee. This is when we set up for warrior one. Take the right foot out towards the side if you need a little bit more space. Bring the back left foot forward and over towards the left until it's planted as you come on up. You might take a moment once you're standing to straighten the front leg, firm up the inner thigh, and get tall and long through the torso. As you bend the front knee, arms sweep up and out into warrior one position. Right, fingers spreading and reaching up towards the sky, back heel rooted, back left thigh slightly drawing forward, and then start to straighten the front leg, arms come down by your side, nice and slow, like wings. Flip the palms, sweep it back up as the shin draws forward. We keep the torso nice and upright, the hips descend down. And starting to straighten through the front leg, arms out nice and wide, they slope down. Rebend through the front knee, that shin shifts forward, arms rise up. Back heel rooted. One more time, straighten you through the front leg. If I had the numbers off on the other side, I'm sorry. <laughs> I never count. Rebend through the front knee, rise up. Feel the ribs lift, chest lift. And as you exhale, nice and slow and controlled, hands come down to frame the front foot. You'll want to reach the back leg longer behind you, coming onto the backs of the toes into a lunge. So set up the lunge, and then we'll come into the twist. Left palm is underneath the left shoulder. Right hand comes around the hip. Look forward beyond your mat as you inhale and then start to turn open towards your twist. Right arm is welcome to float up towards the ceiling. Firm up the left palm on the floor a little bit more. Continue to reach long with that back leg. Breathe, and as you exhale, hand comes down to frame the outside of the right foot. Take your time either stepping back into tabletop position or from here, downward facing dog. The vinyasas are all an invitation. Nothing's a requirement. <laughs> Come forward on an inhale. Otherwise, just hold your down dog. You're in a plank position. Release the shins down, untuck the toes, and slowly come on down. You're bending at the elbows using a lot of upper body and shoulder strength. Once the forehead touches the mat, we build Bhujangasana Cobra. We lift up the head and chest. Shoulders are away from the ears. Elbows are hugging. Tuck the toes, shift the hips back and up. Downward facing dog. A few breaths wherever you are. Taking rest when you need to, and really finding a balanced practice today. As many steps as you need, starting to walk forward, Uttanasana, forward bend. Slowly rising up to stand, big sweep of the arms out and up, reaching up, rising up. Hands meet at heart center, and arms soften down by your side. Find your nice, steady, balanced, strong Tadasana. As you inhale, get a little bit taller, more energetically. Sit back, chair pose, bend the knees, sweep the arms back behind you, and then rise them up any height. Your hips are sitting back and down. You maintain that length through the torso from your hip creases all the way up through the tops of the shoulders. You'll feel some engagement in the navel center, broadest across the chest, soft, easy gaze. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Stand up nice and tall, rise up nice and high. And as you exhale, all the way back down towards the mat with Tanasana forward bend, let it go. Halfway as you inhale, hands to shins or thighs, lengthen out through the torso. Exhale, soften the knees, let the head get heavy with Tanasana. Plant the palms, bend the knees. Let's step back into plank position. Once you're in plank, you can decide what you'd like to do next. You can either take it back to down dog or move through a vinyasa, right? Slow and steady practice, so we're really watching what we're doing. If the knees are coming down, just bend at the elbows. Elbows draw by the sides of the ribcage, releasing the torso to the floor. Finding your back bend, lifting up into cobra, bhujangasana, firm up your thighs. Feel the navel draw in, chest open and broad, and then come back into uh, child's pose, not down dog. Sit the hips towards the heels, relax through the forehead. Take a soft breath in and a soft, easy breath out. 
When you're ready, you, we're gonna start to walk our hands up towards our thighs. Take a moment, good. And then let's come onto our backs. I'll have us come onto our backs in a slow, steady way. So you'll bring your feet out in front of you. Heels at the, uh, the front of your mat, you'll pause. You'll sit up nice and tall so that you're right underneath the six bones, right? And we have that length through the spine. You can soften the knees. Draw the arms up, reach up, rise up, just like when we're standing in mountain pose and we reach the arms up. Draw the hands to heart center, pause, and then slowly, slowly start to roll down. So it's a backward tilt of the pelvis, the belly scoops, and we slowly come down. If this starts to cause any discomfort in the low back, <laughs> anywhere else, you can ixnay this and come right onto the mat. Pause, you might hover, lifting the heels, arms out in front of you, spread through the fingers, and then slowly let that go. Reach the arms up overhead for a full body stretch. Really expand, open up through the rib cage and chest. Feel your aliveness in this stretch. And very slowly, navel in towards spine, gather both knees in towards the chest and a gentle rocking from side to side. Feel the head very relaxed into the mat, shoulders relaxing. So creating the habits of releasing some tension in places that we often hold stress. Let the feet come down towards the floor. We're gonna do some active rolling bridges. If you prefer to use a block, you can bring a block underneath your sacrum as well. So the feet are about hips width apart. They could be a little bit wider. The feet are parallel. We'll take a nice belly breath in. Just feel the belly fully. You can even have your hands on the belly here and feel this fullness here as you breathe in. And as you exhale, the navel draws in and we're gonna to start to tilt the pelvis back towards our chest as we lift it off the floor. Your lower back vertebrae and mid back come off the floor. You might have your fingers right on the, the tips of the um, tops of your hip points. You can ask them to lift up nice and high here and then slowly come down. Now the mid back vertebrae soften towards the floor, the low back and the hips relax back down. And we're gonna to start to do this a few more times. You could add the arms as well, take a breath in. And as you exhale, start to lift up through the hips, the low back and mid back rise on up. The arms can reach back behind you if this is interesting to you and you enjoy it. Back of the palms touch the floor. Root down into the heels a little bit more and lift up those hips a little bit higher if you can. Slowly come down, draw the navel and slowly to vertebrae by vertebrae. Releasing down, hips softening, the arms and palms rest by your side. So it has a very kind of fluid flow like movement. As you exhale next time, start to tilt the pelvis back, lifting it off the mat like you're peeling off the vertebrae off the floor. <laughs> Low back, mid back, arms reach back behind you. Feel the chest open and relaxed. Back of the neck long. Keep the feet deeply rooted into the floor as you lift through the hips. Feel the engagement through the legs. And then slowly, slowly release down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Mid back, lower back, hips, and the arms soften down. Nice and easy. This time we're gonna hold it. So we'll take a breath in. We'll take a breath out. We'll start to root into the soles of the feet, lifting up the hips, lifting up the lower back vertebrae and the mid back. If you wanted to, you could explore snugging the shoulders closer towards one another. And my suggestion would be to take the outer edges of your, of your mat and start to just draw one shoulder a little bit more into the middle of the mat and then do it with the other shoulder. And now the arms are a little bit more into the middle of your mat. Feel the backs of the arms rooted into the floor. You could even clasp the palms if this feels good in the body. And it's gonna give you a little bit more lift right through the chest. Back of the neck is long, chin in towards, in line with the heart space, the sternum. Feet planted, hips rising. Take one more breath in. Feel the belly and ribs fill with breath. And then slowly, slowly you're gonna feel the shoulders kind of soften away from one another, the shoulder blades the mid-back and the low-back and the hips soften towards the floor. Ah. The feet separate the width of the mat, the knees come to touch gently, arms can come out in a beautiful T, and you'll let the knees sweep from side to side in this dynamic flow. Notice when the knees come over towards the right next time, you're on the outer blade of your right foot and the inner blade of your left. You're gonna really let gravity do its thing, so letting the hips soften down, little twist, a little rotation, and then you'll come back to center, knees touch, and they fall over towards the left, coming onto the outer blade of the left foot and the inner blade of the right. Notice how relaxed the arms can be, the shoulders, the back of the neck, as you explore this gentle, you know, kind of 
dynamic swaying motion. Nice and easy. You'll hug the knees in towards the chest, gather them in. And then happy baby, so knees out wide. Right, feet rising up towards the sky. Hands behind the backs of the thighs to begin. Soften the knees out towards the side. So feel, look, look at your toes and just make sure that you have your toes slightly pitched out. Roll your ankles out, one direction, the other, rock from side to side, and then go ahead and walk your hands up towards your calves or maybe your feet if this is something that feels good in the body. Hips are softening down, chest is relaxed, back of the head is relaxed fully into the floor. And then slowly bring the knees back into center, lengthen the legs up towards the ceiling, up towards the sky, wherever you are, and let the arms come back behind you, point the toes, and flex the toes. Do that one more time, pointing and flexing. Hug the knees in towards the chest. Hands come around the shins. You might even lift up the head and shoulders rounding. And then slowly release the head down. Arms sweep back behind you. Legs elevate up, pointing the toes and flexing the toes. Slowly hug the knees in. Let the feet soften down towards the floor. And take your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Draw your right shin towards the front of your mat. Let yourself gently rock from side to side. And then if you want to lift up the left foot, draw the left knee in towards the chest as you continue to draw the right shin towards the front of your mat. A little swaying might be nice, little circles around the low back. Let yourself come back to being here. <laughs> When the mind drifts, come back to breath, sensation. And then very gently, left foot comes down, right foot comes down, switching sides. Left outer ankle on top of right, drawing the left shin away from you. A gentle rock from side to side. Chest softening, shoulders softening. Hugging the right knee in towards the chest if you're inclined. See your body needs, it's so different for each of us. And you're welcome to create little circles here rocking from side to side. When you're ready. Both feet come down towards the floor. Whole body stretch, reach out in all directions. And as you exhale, the arms soften down by your sides. And you can set up for a Shavasana. You're welcome to pause this taping so you have some additional time to rest in presence, allowing the body to recover, restore from everything we do. Allowing the breath to have a softness to it, a fullness. And taking a breath in, let that breath go. Feel the body fully, fully taking all the weight of the floor. Just let the body soften in. When you're ready, just gently rock the head from side to side. A little gentle massage in the back of the head. Fingers and toes spread out. Gather the knees in towards the chest. Allow yourself to roll over to one side that you like. Maybe take a pause there. And then pressing up to a comfortable seat. Whatever that is for you. You can keep the eyes open or closed. And just feel yourself settling in. Take a moment. It's art of sitting. Resting the eyes over the bridge of the nose or closing them. Bringing the hands to heart center. Make that intention of being more mindful, present with ourselves, easy with ourselves as we move about the rest of our day. Bringing the thumbs up towards the third eye center. 